Hello my dear ones and welcome to 2012 part 3 of my blog. I decided to read it to you guys because it's a little long and um, also because there's there's so much I want to say and I, I have to say it in a certain way as well, in a certain sequence, so I felt this would be a kind of fun, different way. Um, so here we go. Uh, this I feel is one of the most important things to understand about 2012. Oh, I forgot to say the title. <laughs> um, it's called My Dance with the Dark and uh, How to Be Free from the Illuminati. It has two titles. It can have two. Um, so this, I feel, is the most important thing to understand about 2012. And the only way for me to help you understand is to share my own personal experience. At first, some of you may ask, why is she sharing this? What does this have to do with 2012? My response is, it has everything to do with 2012 in which the journey that I underwent with the dark will be something that all of you will have to take and understand in your own life, in which the dark stepped in and took you in as its dance partner and there was no way to avoid it, as it always found its way into your own personal private life. To understand the dark is to be free from the dark. It's, I start this blog off as a series of clues. Our lives are mystery novels full of suspense and intrigue. Clue number one. As a young girl, I remember thinking how strange this world is. It seems that it is fixed so everyone is going through so much pain, whether it be mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, or astral. I wondered, why is this? Later on, I learned about all the things that had happened to my family. They felt as if they were cursed. There were many close calls with my father growing up. It seemed like some hidden being was trying to kill him and through his whole life keep him down keep the whole family down, it seemed. My father was very frustrated by this, and it was like being in the game of snakes and ladders, getting ahead, then hitting the snake head, and having to slide back down, only to have to start all over again. Sounds like reincarnation, hey? Play again and again till you get it right. Is it luck of the dice throw, or is it an unseen hand that decides what number it shall be? Clue number two. When I was about ten, I almost had a friend that, that all, <laughs> I always read this wrong. I almost had a friend because when I was younger I didn't have any friends and um, it almost worked but it changed when one day I was speaking on the phone with her while she was, had some other friends over and they decided to play a Ouija board. When she mentioned this to me, I told her that game is evil and the board started to freak out when it heard my voice on the other line and started to talk about me. It said that I would be shot in the head in two days. The girl told me, Jess, this is for real. When the board says something, it happens. I heard how one time there was this girl and the Ouija board said that she'd be hit by a bus in three days and she was. I hung up the phone and ran away crying to my dad. I told him all that had transpired. And he said, Jess, it'll be okay. Everything will be okay. All you have to do is don't believe it. Don't give it any power. Don't feed it. I listened to my dad's advice and well, here I am to this day, so. <laughs> but from that day forward, I was terrified of Ouija boards. My father always was somewhat of a foreshadower, hinting and planting seeds within that would flower later. At that time, who knows about the mysterious seeds in the ground and what it will turn out to be? How successful will those little delicate seeds be? Will it get all it would need to withstand a storm? And is there an etheric that tends to and challenges the crops? Later on in life, when I was about 23, my girlfriend had me over because she had this Ouija board and it was not working. She felt very strongly that I could get it to work. At first I was upset by this idea. My mind instantly reminded me of my past experience, how scared I was, but it was a belief and I am more in my power today than before. I did not have to be a victim of repetitious past experiences if I were in a new headspace. This time it would be different. I would, I would not be in fear and earnest judgment. Maybe this really was a tool to bridge the human and spirit world. And when I put my hand on the pointer, it started to move. We asked it what it wanted, and it said, I want to speak to Jessica. What do you want Jessica to do, we asked it. Help me go home. We learned she was in her 80s and was trapped. She wanted to cross over, but did not, did not know how. 
So she would have to wait till someone who had a certain kind of vibe that would signify to the spirit that they could help send them home. And so I sent her home. And I was so proud of myself. I was free from my childhood fear pocket and that my beliefs were strong enough to have my time with the Ouija board be a pleasant one. Clue number three. My father told me how one day he was in town and there was this big hoopla there where swarms of people everywhere. He could hardly move and the streets were so packed. What was going on that so many people gathered, he wondered. He made his way to the front of the crowd only to see the queen. And she was walking by. Odd thing was, said my dad, of all the people who were there, for some reason the queen's eyes immediately went on my eyes as if she sensed my presence. Her eyes locked on his and would not leave them even as she walked past him. Her head would, would crank, oh, bleh, would crank looking back. She had this look on her face, one of shock, recognition, dumbfounded, and concern. How could it be, wondered my father out loud. How did she know me? Why did she look at me like that? Perhaps she knows the seeds I am here to bring forth. Clue number four. The first dream came to see me that night. In the dream, my family and I were in this palace and we were with the English royal family. I was to marry Prince William. I saw behind his back some white strings. I followed them and found a shadow, char a shadow character that had strings to his back as well. And their strings led to some reptile beings and even that being had white strings on it on its back like this never-ending marionette hierarchy, or so I thought. The more I followed the strings connected to all the people who have ever lived in the world, I found that the strings led even to my own back. Even I was being pulled and played. What did this dream mean? I did not even have a crush on Prince William. I was instead into the boy band Hanson at the time. I know you guys will bug me for this, uh, but we all have our embarrassing crushes, and as I got older, my crushes matured in that I started to be interested in cartoon characters. <laughs> and how old I was at the time, I cannot recall, but I know it was close to the time of the passing of Princess Diana. Clue number five. I had this bully who tormented me in school. I always ran or tried to fight them. I could never win. Though my answer... Through to my answer came a, I cannot read what I write, dyslexia is great. Um, though to answer my silent question came a prayer. I was in a Walmart and there was this old red-haired woman standing next to me. She looked at me and started to say hurtful things at me. So I said hurtful things back and she responded with a smile and spouted even more ugly things. Then she started to physically attack me, hitting, punching, and kicking me, so I fought back. Only she got stronger and I got smaller and weaker. Then the dream became rather Looney Tunes in that weapons were involved. We went from guns to giant boulders, swords to tanks to missiles. She used a weapon and I used a bigger weapon. Then she used an even bigger weapon. And well, you get the idea. <laughs> By this time, this old lady was larger than life and super strong and I was small, frail and oh so weak. I was going to give up. I was beaten. What could I do? She was always one step ahead of me and creative in making pain into an art. Then came my dream guides and said, well, you tried fighting her, Jess. A lot of good that did you. Look at you now. There is nothing I can do, I said. To which they replied, yes, we see that you have tried all pain tactics and you're all out of ideas. What kind of artist are you? I guess we had you mistaken. Your soul boasted how you were an artist of life and of love, but your actions say otherwise. You fell into the amnesia sea and now you forgot. You forgot your other options. To understand the dark is to be free from the dark. Okay, okay. To understand the beast that is now trashing the tan and terrorizing the people, I need to talk to her. So I did. I talked to her. And when I talked to her, I learned her story and learned about her strife. And I started to understand her. When I started to understand her, I started to like her. I could relate in a way I could see myself in her. I then started to love her. How could I not? How could I not love something that was so love-starved? How could I not love a piece of myself? The love